Alright guys, we're up here with some Lux Gaming and welcome to my third ever tournament for reassembly. Very exciting and specifically very exciting today because we have a lot of entries into the tournament. And simply because you guys were so great to actually send me emails with your ships, which has just been incredibly useful. So I, you know, I literally, I just go into the directory wherever I, wherever I put the file and click on it and boom, it ends up on the in, a, in a, a little folder called imported ships and then I can just copy it over. It is so much easier than what we we're doing before. Now, of course, there were some of you that were unable to, to send me an email for whatever reason and uh, that's okay. I did try to get as many of you into this particular tournament as I could, but I wasn't able to get everybody because I just wasn't able to find you. Um, so we're going to go over the rules really quickly again. So if you cannot send me an email, and we'll talk about how to send the email at the end of the episode, or maybe at the end of the second episode, because I think this is going to be a two episode series again, just like last week. Um, but if you're unable to send me an episode, or send me send me an email, sorry, blah, if you're unable to send me an episode, if you're unable to send me an email, you in order to enter the tournament, you must send me the following information. You must send me your Steam name. You must be friended with me on Steam. If you're not friended with me on Steam, none of this works. That's another thing, and I think that might be part of the problem. Is and I'm I'm not I can't look for you. You've got to find me. I, I I'm I'm spending a lot of time building these tournaments as it is. I don't have enough time to look for everybody to friend me. So if you haven't friended me and you want to be part of the tournaments, you got to come friend me. My name is Deluxe, of course, pretty straightforward. And so we must be friends. You must send me your Steam name. And in a message somewhere, either in Steam or on this video, for example, send me your Steam name, send me the fleet name, because I cannot see your Steam name on here. What I see is people's fleet's names, right? Very clear. Have to send me your fleet name. Then you also have to send me what ships you want me to use. Now, we're going to be changing the classes, the weight classes of the ships uh, from here on in too as well on this episode. We're going to be changing a few things in terms of the league and how it works. So specifically, uh, let's go back to my first page. So up to now we've been doing uh, probes at 250, cruisers 3,000, dreadnought 8,000. You cannot go above those numbers. Um, for today's tournaments, yes, we're going to be going by these three categories. Um, going forward, after today, the new leagues are going to be 500, and that will be for gunships. Then we're going to have 4,000. And that's destroyers. I did have this set up, but then I I, uh, I deleted it for some reason. So just give me a sec here. Destroyers. <laughs> Destroy Sorry, it's hard to type and uh, talk at the same time. There we go. Uh, gunships, destroyers, and dreadnoughts. So those three, those are going to be the three new categories. I've raised it up because I think 500 is just a little bit more versatile in terms of shipbuilding. And the same goes for destroyers. I want, you know, middle of the line, right down the middle. So destroyers. So we were originally going with what Arthur, Danskin, and the original tournaments were based on, but we're, now we're kind of making it our own. We're also, you might have noticed, two new, two new categories here. One is called Physics Benders. To be part of the Physics Benders League, you may enter any ship you like. There is no restrictions. Did you hear me? No restrictions. It could be 8,000. It could be 150. It doesn't matter. Um, the reason it's called Physics Benders is because anything goes. That includes spinning ships. Why do I bring that up? Well, any ship that bends physics in any way, shape, or form can no longer be used in the regular three categories. Yes, this includes spinning ships. Now, the reason I say that is I've done a whole bunch of experimental just test runs with spinning ships included in with other ships, and spinning ships always win. They always come out on top. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things, it's, it's like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't, because you don't want to disqualify winners. Yeah, of course, you don't want to disqual disqualify winners. But it's the thing is, these, these spinny ships are very, very simple. There's really not a lot to them. Anybody could put it together in, in seconds, and the, the fights would be identical. And it's really, it's, it's completely random. There's really not a lot of skill involved in building the ship. So that's the only one that I really wanted to be sure that was in a separate category. Now, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't build spinny ships and enter them in. I want you to build your spinny ships and enter them in. It's just you're going to be part of the physics benders category. Any ship goes in physics benders. So keep in mind, you could build your spinny ship and you could be fighting against 8,000p ships. That's possible. But 8,000p uh, spinny ships may not 
work so well. You know what I'm saying? So this is this is this is going to be a really interesting category, and I don't know if we'll do this one every week. We might do it every week if we've got a if we've got a lot of interest. I did get a lot of spinny ships in entered into this particular tournament today, um, and we are going to be separating them out. Uh, so you know, I mean, maybe, maybe we'll throw them up today too as well. But physics benders, whole new category. Build your spinny ships, build your ships that really, they bend the crap out of the physics in the game and they kind of almost break all the rules and you get to get put into the physics benders. Uh, faction 4, on the note of Faction 4, we are no longer, I mean, we, sorry, <laughs> I know I scared everybody. Faction 4 goes, Faction 4 is fine. At this point in time, I don't have a reason to believe 100% that, that the Faction 4 will win all the time. Now, just based on the last tournament and based on what I've seen, so far now my opinion on that may change but i uh, like i said before we can't just disqualify the winners of of all the uh competitions right so yes there is some definite advantages to having a faction four ship and uh but that doesn't mean that your faction four ship is going to be the winner it doesn't mean that uh you know all other factions are going to be the losers so until we we may modify that a little bit more as time goes on and we may just ex you know, get rid of the modular weapons for general categories like this, these general categories and just put it into physics benders or something like that. But for now, we're going to keep that as is. So we clear. So spinny ships go into physics benders, actually any ship, any, if you want something specifically to go into the physics benders category, let me know. Um, and we'll put you in the physics benders cap category. Now, the last category of ships, or the uh, league, the last category of league is called champions. And that's exactly what it sounds like. Anybody that has won a previous tournament in any one of these categories will be part of the champions league. And champions will fight champions. Now, the winners of all of these leagues will have an opportunity to fight champions in their weight class. Make sense? So if there is five different champions at 500... Um, then you can actually challenge the champions in the in the in the in that particular weight class, and I'd like these to be more special episodes or special events where we get uh, one one person against another, and we're gonna do not just uh, three rounds; it's gonna be more than that. You know, we're gonna do like a ten round battle or something. You know, it'll be really fun, and then you know have them all against one another. I think it'll be really really fun. Anyway, I really like this idea of having a group just for champions. So if you happen to win um, the dreadnought category at one point, in other words, Ethan's part of the champions category. Uh, <laughs> it makes sense, right? Uh, unfortunately, that does not include spinning ships. So spinning ships have their own category. Makes sense? Okay, I think we're good. So, to enter into the next tournament, please feel free to send me an email. We'll go over that right now, just so everybody's clear. So, uh, well, actually, we'll do it at the end because I don't want to. I, I don't want to mess up what I've got going here because I'm gonna. I'm gonna show everybody how to go through that process of getting your save files and and sending them via email at the end. But I can't do it right now because this is all up. Okay, so we're gonna get started with the probe category. First off, let's talk about who did not get included, and uh, I apologize for that. Okay, Just LOLs. I could not find your fleet name Metroforce. I found your your YouTube name as a fleet name, and the ships weren't there, so I didn't know what happened there. Uh, let's see who else couldn't I get? Uh, Tyre Lasher. I couldn't. I mean, I found the fleet name Terror Hell, but I couldn't find an appropriate ship for the probe. Uh, we'll take a look again for the cruiser, and uh, that's it. So those are the only ones that entered without sending me an email that couldn't get in. The other guys, the other guys are in. So Mystical, Mystical Meerkat, Phil, SBS, Callord. Uh, the uh, Shadow Claw, sorry, <laughs> wanted to be called Shadow Claw, so there we go, and Rune Raider, you guys are all in. Now, uh, so as far as the ones that actually sent me an email, everybody, uh, of course, I found all your ships. Isn't that amazing? Found all your ships. Now, that doesn't mean everybody's allowed in here, because, uh, Baltzy, uh, your bleeder ship was too big. It has to be 250 or less for this category, and of course, next week it's going to be 500, so it would be fine for next week. Um, now we have... Mr. 5x5, five five. <laughs> case for banning spinner type ships. It was the name of the ship, and it, of course, is a spinner, so it will be part of the spinner category. And we have Seraphim. Of course, uh, your ship, good SPAC ship, was too big. Uh, Ast Astomite. Sorry if I mispronounced your names. I tried my best, right? Orbital Cheese. Uh, interesting ship. Very interesting ship. I, uh, I don't know if I can find it here. So, you know, upon looking at it, I thought it was strictly a spinning ship. And I looked closer and realized, well, or well, I actually tested it out. So that's this one here. Now, it does look like a spinning ship, but sometimes it is and sometimes it isn't. 
So 50% of the time it would start spinning right off the bat and 50% of the time it wouldn't. So it's it's right in the middle and unfortunately just because it sort of won by it wins by default as soon as it starts spinning. So I had to disqualify it for the uh, regular uh, tournament, but you will be part of the spinning round. And then Ethan, of course, you you entered in a sp uh, small spinner, but I, I'm going to have to put that into the separate competition. And of course, Camel 5, you entered in a spinner as well, and I, I just won't be able to enter it in for this one. But uh, everybody else that sent me an email, you're in. Just like that. Perfect, eh? Awesome. It worked really well. So, without further ado, I mean, I could talk all night, but I, of course, you guys want to see some action. So, we've got some great designs here. And nothing is really out of bounds. I, I really like it. So there's no spinning designs here. Uh, now, that no. keep in mind, the rule is it can't spin off the bat. So it doesn't mean that you could, if you knocked off a certain engine off of a ship and it started spinning, you know, it's not their fault. It, it, a ship could start spinning at any time. But as long as it doesn't start out as a spinner, whatever. You know what I'm saying. All right, let's get this show on the road. Start. Okay, so starting off, we have Shielded Minibot versus... Silly, ah, uh, si frigate, MK1, sorry. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, ooh, tiny little ship versus lots of armor on, uh, th on the frigate here on MK1. And he's got some shields too. Wow. Whoa. Lucky shot. Well done. Okay, here we go again. Oh, so great. Uh, ew, I didn't expect, wow. So what has he got in there? It looks like it's rails. It looks like he's, uh, holy smokes. Wow, you got some good firepower on there, buddy. Awesome. Oh, they were the lasers. That's what they are. They're like the Arcus lasers or whatever they are. Awesome. And he's got the shields too, which is really nice. So Catalyst, here comes Catalyst. Looks like he's got a lot of armor as well versus Titan Drone. Both, both very slow moving vehicles. So interesting. Oh, just lots of firepower. All armor and shields and lots of firepower. Oh, but it looks like maybe Catalyst has the advantage here with... No, no, because Drone has those shields up again. Wow, but look at all that armor. He's got a lot of armor to dig through. I don't know if Drone can take those hits. Oh, yeah, see, Drone got him. Wow, nicely done. Those shields, uh, you know, shields in, a, in the smaller ship competition is can be pretty good, but you, you are definitely making a sacrifice doing that. So it looks like that's a Faction 1 ship, Titan Drone, and then Catalyst, maybe it is as well. <laughs> very, uh, very well armored, anyway. I would... I would even consider Catalyst Drone maybe adding, if you're going to do the armor route, maybe adding the slightly bigger armor in the front there. It just has, I think it has more than twice the amount of hit points, but just just a, just an idea. Eldrazi, Eldrazi Spawn versus Blue and Black Probe. And I think Blue and Bra Black in honor of all the controversy right now over colorblind people can't <laughs> that can't see uh, uh, Blue and Black, I guess. I don't know. My, my father-in-law is actually uh, colorblind. Oh, wild! Oh, lots of missiles! See, blue and black started spinning there, but, you know, it's just because he knocked out some of those engines. Yes! One for Eldrazi. Okay, blue and black. Here he comes again. Yeah, he's, he's just a really highly maneuverable fighter, and he's got to get in with those lasers. Those lasers can be really good, but they are a precise weapon, and they are not a heavy damage dealer. And unless you can get a direct line on some soft inner bits, you, you might have some trouble against a ship with lots of armor. Oh, yeah, Eldrazi wins it. And armor doesn't cost any 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 P, so, you know. But it does slow down your vehicle, so you do have to make sure that you compensate with engines. Or just not be very fast, you know. Uh, oh, so the Moth versus Draza patrol ship. What a cool looking ship. Both of them actually look very neat. And lots of missiles coming from the Moth. A lot of missiles coming from the Moth. Wow. I didn't know a ship could have that many missiles of this weight class. Okay, and Draza, highly maneuverable, but he looks like he's losing his wings. Oh no, oh no! Oh, actually, really neat, neat fight. And Draza's getting away long enough to rebuild some of those parts, but not fast enough. Oh, he's starting to spin, hit that may give him an advantage. I don't know. Uh, looks like the Moth is just applying way too much damage. Not enough time for Draza to rebuild. Well done, Moth, excellent. Draza comes in with the missiles again. I just don't... Oh! Oh, he, he, God nailed him hard right at the beginning there. This might be this might be a win for Draza. He just... Look at how much points he did. Oh, but that Moth rebuilt fast enough. Draza, you just gotta apply just a little bit more damage. But you... you I love the maneuverability of your ship. That is... Uh, and it, I love the forward firing... Uh, forward facing wings. Well done, Draza. Excellent job. Okay, here comes Draza again. Can he do it again? I don't know. This is this is a pretty fair fight. Uh, one and one so far. 
looks like Draza can dodge those shots a little bit better and has a little bit better point defense, but the Moth just has a lot, a lot of missiles, just non-stop pumping out of him. So here it comes again. Once it gets close, it gets kind of hairy because what kind of gun is that? They look like they're, they're just auto cannons or something, and they, they're really good at taking down um, those missiles, of course. Uh, looks like he's maybe having power problems. I don't know, hard to say. Hard, no, no, he wouldn't be having power problems. He's, he's got more than enough. I don't know, it's weird. The AI does weird things sometimes, like it stops shooting in defense. Uh, and then, of course, the moth has uh, some other... I'm not sure what they are. Some other... Oh, well done. Well done, Draza. It was, it was a good fight. I thought Moth was actually going to take it, but well done. Well done. All right, who do we... All right, more powerful with many. So this is a... Uh, looks like another missile ship. Oh, and just a... Holy crow, look at all the little guns. That's a lot of little guns. And all of the engines are on the inside of, of the Cheats Probe. Interesting that you named it the Cheats Probe. Is it because you cheated somehow? I don't know. <laughs> That's a really good question. Okay, so Cheats Probe, actually it's a very fair fight so far. It looks like, at, well, actually more powerful with many has actually applied more damage. Just that many missiles and you're going you're gonna to get hits unless the enemy has a lot of defense guns or is highly remunerated. You know, I wouldn't have suspected that uh, the Cheats Probe would have been so maneuverable because he's he's got so much armor on him, but he's just whipping around. <laughs> Look at him go. <gasps> That's amazing. Wow, uh, unfortunately, he's just, I think he's got to get in close to do the, the damage he needs to do to win the fight. He's just got uh, auto cannons or something on him. So he's got to get in pretty close to do the damage. And whereas more powerful with many uh, can just keep him at range and keep him at arm's length and uh, keep him moving. But if he gets in close, if he gets in close, oh, 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 here it goes. Yeah, I thought maybe Cheese Probe might be able to get enough shots in. Oh, wow. Okay, gonna have to cheat better. It was a good fight, honestly. That was a brilliant fight. Really good fight. All right, so here comes Cheats Probe again. Is going. He's getting in close. Oh, but it doesn't seem like he's doing enough damage with those auto cannons. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Maybe, maybe a different gun. I, I like your tactic. I like the ship. It's really fast and maneuverable, so, and it's got a lot of armor on it. I just think you need maybe a little bit more firepower. I think that's the only thing you're missing. Uh, but, but you've actually applied more damage bulk damage oh no sorry my bad it's the other way around uh, more powerful with many just those missiles man they're just they're eating it alive you know maybe some point defense I don't know I don't know hard to say both very cool designs I'm very very impressed with how maneuverable cheats probe is too and more powerful with many that's a really long name to say when you're trying to uh, commentate something like this it looks like a little uh looks like a little jet it looks really cool he's just sitting there sniping <laughs> <laughs> wow, we're gonna run out the clock here. Holy smokes. It's not very often to run out the clock with just regular small ships that aren't spinny ships like this. This is quite quite the little... I, You know, actually that little more powerful with many does look like a little F-14 or something with the wings retracted inwards. That looks really cool. Well done, my friend. Uh, and we're on to... T t trickle Dart. I wanted to say Tickle Dart. Versus KSW, the she shielded minibot, which looks like, wow, look at those lasers. Whoa! Lots of lasers and lots of shields. So I'm assuming when KSW starts getting hit, he's going to burn through that energy pretty fast. But holy smokes, that was uh, lightning fast. Whew, super fast. Really good contenders. I love this. Really awesome. So what do we got here? Oh, so that looks like... I'm not sure, is that a Faction 4? I think it is a Faction 4 ship, so it's a Coil Gun Gustav Mini Mum versus Firefly. Firefly, oh, just not quite fast enough. I'm not sure what you got on the sides there. It looks like you maybe have some storage containers on the side. You might want to take those off, because um, they might be slowing you down slightly. Well, I could be wrong. I'm not sure what those are on, on the side of your ship there, Firefly. But it looks like uh, they might be slowing you down. But look at, you're dodging the, the missiles, or the... Uh, yeah, I think this is the same guy that had uh, Railgun, one of the Railgun, Gustav Railgun or something, I don't remember. And it is definitely a Faction 4, but, you know, the, the individual shots are good, but not enough to get through that armor. It looks like Firefly has a nice little uh, hood ornament in the front there that will prevent any direct frontal shots from getting through too easily. He's getting hit, but he's, you know, he's going to lose, he's going to lose it by... Uh, by time here more than anything. I'm going to speed this one up just because, yeah, I just don't think Firefly can keep up 
He's just a little too slow, and he just can't get close enough to deal any damage himself. So well done, Super Probe. That uh, reverse engine is serving you well. So you'll notice the gun is facing in the same direction that most of the engines are, so he just travels in reverse really fast. It's, it's a brilliant design. I, and, you know, for especially for Faction 4, where you've got this big forward-firing gun that requires aiming, having engines that fire backwards so that you move really fast in reverse, or I guess it all depends. You can call it a rear-firing gun. You move really fast going forward, but you got a rear-firing gun, right? I love it. I absolutely love it. Well done. Okay, so who's next? We've got Pest versus the Titan Drone. Ooh, Pest looks like he's going to be very maneuverable. Oh, look at that. And Titan Drone is, of course, we've t seen Titan Drone and his shields. And, uh, yeah, he's just a... A lot of guns and shields. <laughs> but Pess, look at how maneuverable he is. Although he hasn't applied a hit yet. Uh, oh, no. he. Oh, no. Sorry. My bad. Yeah, he's he's actually applying lots and lots of damage. But Titan Drone is actually having tr trouble getting the shots in. He's just not fast enough and maneuverable enough to keep up with uh, little Pest there. But I know Titan Drone has a... Uh, looks like a medium plasma on it, so if he does get in too close, if Pest gets in too close and uh, doesn't move fast enough, he may get pummeled by that uh, railgun. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to happen here, so we're just going to speed that up just a little bit. There we go, two times seems like a good number sometimes. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Titan Drone, you're getting those pot shots, an occasional shot in. Um, I want to know what gun that is. Is that like a... I, you know, with the color... Gee, you could, I, they look like they're auto cannons. They look like they're auto cannons that Titan Drone has. Um, and with the ability to change the colors and stuff, it does change the color of your guns. So sometimes it can be difficult to tell uh, exactly. Did, did you actually kill him? I don't know. I, I sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I should suppose I should pay attention. Yeah, Titan Drone, you're getting one one point at a time. Those little auto cannons just don't do enough damage. Good for point defense, but not so great to actually apply damage. And your big gun is just too slow to actually hit past past. It's a perfect name for you, Pest. <laughs> You're very pesty. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I think uh, the pestiness is going to win the day. I just love the different designs. It's so cool. So, yeah, Titan Drone that dominated last time is struggling with a smaller, lighter ship. I say smaller. It's just lighter and really well maneuverable. I mean, it's got the, uh, what is it, uh, three engines facing all four directions evenly. It's a perfectly symmetrical, almost perfectly symmetrical ship. Uh, well, it's perfectly symmetrical from on from left side to right side. There we go. Perfect. Well done. Awesome. Pest is going to be in the final four. Or not, or sorry, not in the final four. The final eight. So, and then we've got uh, Boomerang Mark II variant. So, Boomerang is made by Sir Boomalot, the same gentleman that uh, entered in all of the spinny ships last time and changed the game forever. <laughs> uh, but he has some, he has a new ship that is not a spinny ship. That uh, appears to do pretty good. Looks like he's got a a sword, a proton sword on there. And then we've got Mini Purger, who's got three medium rail guns, I believe. So he's got to get fairly close. And Boomerang's got some beautiful maneuvering engines. Wow, that was impressive. Well done, Boomerang. Nice looking ship, too. That looks looks pretty sexy. You gotta admit that looks pretty sexy. Okay, Draza Patrol ship, highly maneuverable, with lots of missiles versus Eldrazi spawn, which also has missiles, and oh, 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 well done, and lots of armor, and some, yeah, missiles, armor, and maybe small plasmas, I'm not sure what the, oh, and defense guns too as well, interesting choice, interesting choice, well, it's serving you well, uh, sorry, Draza, <laughs> uh, okay, and then we're, oh, we've, so we've got our reverse gun, our large reverse gun with the, uh, fast engines that keeps this oh but he's not he's not actually getting away this time see that's the problem with that that uh, that that design is that you've got to keep that range and you've got the engines to do it I just don't think the AI was moving fast enough oh here we go getting close again oh see once again it's in close he can chew you oh man you know it's an AI flaw I I know it's an AI flaw but uh, either way, good job, KSW. You are, you're really dominating. You're doing really well. I'm really impressed. Okay, Fish Drone, which is Rune Raider, I believe, versus Pest. So highly maneuverable with, against lots and lots and lots of firepower. The, so uh, Fish has, of course, that larger railgun on it, which is uh, taking up all of his 
uh, ship. You know, it's, it's makes for a pretty big gun. The problem is that gun is really slow tracking and maybe not that effective against a ship like Pest. Although he has applied way more damage than Pest, so who knows? I don't know. And what's interesting about uh, Rune Raider's design here, about Fish Drone, is that he also has lots of good maneuvering engines. So he's almost keeping up with Pest, and that's where he's going to win it. You know? Oh, oh, oh! He actually applied. Oh, he knocked off that. Beautiful! Well done! Nicely played, Rune Raider. Excellent. Ah, that's a beautiful design. I really like it. Um, both are really nice designs um, in, in their own right, but, uh, you know, if, if Rune Raider can just knock out one of those engines, Fish will take it. Fish will take it. So you've got to keep moving. Uh, oh! Ah! Oh. Because, <laughs> got to keep in mind, Rune Raider or Fish Drone's uh, guns do not track all that well. So if you can keep moving, you're pretty much good, but... Yeah, he's got you on the run. Yeah, that bigger gun. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe there's just... Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, without that engine, I think you're in trouble, but... Yep, yeah, there you go. Well done, fish. Well done. Excellent. Excellent! Okay, so final... F the race for the final four. Leaky Laser versus Boomerangs. This is gonna be... Uh, I, I don't know where I put my money. I think Leaky Laser has got to keep some range. So it looks like he's got... He's got... Uh, Dumbfire missiles on his vehicle, which is a yeah, really good choice, keeping that range and just trying to snipe him. But if Boomerang gets closer and he gets in with that Proton Sword, you might be in trouble. That Proton Sword will chew you up. So you got to keep that range. Oh, there you go. That's it. That's it. Now start firing. But still, you know, it's going to be hard to hit with those missiles. Really hard. So those are Dumbfire missiles. I forget what they're called. They might even be called Dumbfire Missiles, I don't remember. But they don't actually track, so he's relying on a little bit of luck there, you know. His gunner, you know. Oh, he's just... Ah, uh, so close! So close! You haven't hit one slow Leaky Laser. I like the name, Leaky Laser, by the way. Uh, oh, oh! Oh, and Boomerang starts to get, take the hits. Oh, he's knocked out an engine. Oh, this is not good for Leaky Laser. Oh, no! And it looks like... Looks like Boomerang... Oh, he lost his gun. Oh, so well done. Oh, and now... But Leaky Laser is now a spinny ship, at least temporarily. <laughs> He's knocked off the right combination of uh, engines to make Leaky Laser a... Well, was a spinny ship, but... Interesting tactic. So, you know, I would think, well, maybe designing a ship that would uh, turn into a spinny ship easily if certain things were knocked off. I don't know. Oh, there we go. Good fight. Really good fight. Uh, it's really unfortunate. I think those Dumbfire missiles are good, but you need to have them in a little bit more quantity, I think, to be effective. And, you know, you might almost want to take off one of your plasma guns with hopes that you can create a ship that can keep that distance and hit with those missiles. I, I just think you need a bigger spread, but I don't know. Hard to say. Uh, Boomerang is a formidable opponent. His ship is highly maneuverable. It's quite fast. It has multiple different types of weapon systems. and Because uh, it has a missile, it has plasmas, small plasmas or something. And uh, the Proton Sword. The Proton Sword being uh, his primary weapon. But he has to aim really well with that sucker. But because he's got such good maneuvering engines, he can. Uh, the Proton Sword requires a little bit of time in order to really do any serious damage. I'm just going to speed it up just a touch. Slow it down if he gets close again. Oh, here we go. Oh, 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 just touching him. Just barely touching him. Leaky. Yeah, I just don't know if you can outmaneuver Boomerang. He's he's just got you on the run. But uh, you made it this far, Leaky. Oh, wait, wait, it's not over. It's not over. Uh, it's pretty much over. I think Boomerang has got you this time. Yeah, there it goes. Well done, Boomerang wins the day. Good job, Leaky. You came, you went, you went, you went far. Well done. Okay, so now we have Eldrazi Spawn versus More Powerful with Many. More Powerful with Many just reminds me of, of an F-14. I just and Eldrazi has those defense guns, which is interesting. I wouldn't have chosen defense guns normally, but uh, they're cheap. They are super cheap, and they are actually offering a little bit of firepower too, as well. And that in combination with the missiles. Uh, and the extra armor, actually, he's he's chewing him up. He's chewing him up. I'm I'm really impressed. And he's noticed he's got his uh, no, his engines are all on the outside, but they're all shielded by more armor. So it's it's a really nice design. It's actually kind of cool. Um, more powerful with many has to outmaneuver 
in order to win, but I just don't know that he can do it. Those missiles are just chewing him up. He's lost an engine, and I think it's pretty much over for more powerful with many. Oh, he's become a spinny ship. This could be this could win it for him, but no, I think Eldrazi's just decided he's just gonna eat him now. Oh no! There we go. <laughs> well, you did excellent fight i love the dog fighting it's so much better honestly it's 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 so much better without the spinny ships in here no offense to you guys that love the spinny ships but uh you actually get to see some some real nice dog fighting is really nice so so far ksw has not wow i was about to say has not even batted an eye at anybody but at anybody but fish drone with that big gun just yeah you just knock him down man wow look at that look at that wow I thought that was going to be a much harder fight for fish, but apparently not. So, Boomerang versus Eldrazi. So, the armor versus the maneuverability. Let's see what happens here. And uh, Eldrazi has lots of firepower, too. Lots of different types of weapons. And I think that's key to designing ships, is making sure that you have more than one weapon type. He also uses making good use of defense guns, which you don't see that often. They're really cheap, and they're just... Uh, they... The thing is, they don't seem to be tracking that well, but they are taking out some of those missiles. Oh, he actually may have the advantage here. He's knocked out Boomerang's primary weapon. If he can actually get a couple more shots here, I don't know, but Boomerang's... Look at how maneuverable Boomer, Boomerang is. He's dodging shots, like, just expertly dodging shots. It's brilliant. But as long as that primary weapon is faced away from his enemy, he might be in trouble. Uh, yeah, see, he's got to keep kind of on the run here because Eldrazi is just super aggressive. He's playing the AI. He's, he's building ships that work with the AI, and it's it's just brilliant. Uh, Boomerang, I just think you are you might be in trouble. You might be in trouble. I, I just love that design, though. It looks slick. It looks very, very slick. Eldrazi, he, is, uh, he actually has not done as much damage as Boomerang yet. I just noticed that. Oh, he's just... Oh, he's just beating Boomerang. Oh, no, there it goes, Boomerang. I think you're pretty much done. All you are is a cab. You're just a cab. There you go. Eldrazi takes the first round. Good fight. Wow. Okay, Boomerang, you've got to do something a little different. This time, fire your gun. Yeah, that's it. Fire at him. Yeah, good job. But I, I, I don't know. You've got to really... You've got to hit him hard to get through all that armor. He's got a lot of armor. You may be maneuverable, but I just don't know that... Oh, 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 oh! If he stands still, it's not a problem, though, right? <laughs> If he's just going to stand there and let you shoot him, oh, you may win this. Oh, 358 points. Oh, well done. Oh, but look at his his cab. I keep saying cab from, you know, because I play a lot of terror tech. But the, uh, the command center on Eldrazi is deep within his ship. Like, he would really have to dig with that proton beam, with that proton sword in order to get to that cap or to the uh, command center. You'll notice Eldrazi is not perfectly symmetrical, guys. I, I, I applaud you, Eldrazi, for not making a perfectly symmetrical ship. That is a uh, challenging thing to do, and something... Oh, oh, oh! Boomerang is actually starting to chew away that armor! Oh, no! He's got him! Wow, round two goes to Boomerang. Well done. Okay, Boomerang's coming in. He's not... Oh, but Eldrazi is mad. He's mad. He's like, I'm, not... I'm gonna dodge the shots. I think that's where he lost last time. He just took too much initial damage from that proton sword. He's, see, he's doing it again. He's got to dodge, and I know it's an AI thing, but, uh, you know, it's luck of the draw here, too. So, yeah, kind of the same scenario here. El uh, Boomerang is just digging in with that laser. Now, I, the only way he's going to get away from... I, I think Eldrazi has just got to outmaneuver now, but I don't know that he can. He's, those missiles are awesome, but... See, if, if I was playing Eldrazi right now, I would just turn away. I would go away and let my missiles re, re, uh, rebuild because now he's, he's got no missiles left. And I think that's his only hope here is, is to be able to blast him with those missiles and knock out that primary weapon, which is just, it's, it's taken him down. Oh, yeah, there goes another one of his engines. It looks like uh, Eldrazi only has one engine left and a lot of armor, but I think that's about to go now, too. There goes Boomerang. Well played. Well played, Eldrazi. Awesome ship. Both awesome ships. This is going to be fun. The big, big, big gun on Fish versus Boomerang with the big, big gun. Look at that. Fish takes it. Wow. Wow. That is amazing. So Fish has got to get in there quick because it didn't take much. Knocked off half of his ship in one shot. <laughs> Boomerang just chewed on him. Oh, no. Is Fish going to lose this? I think Fish might even lose this. Oh, no. Boomerang. You've got to come in hard, buddy. It's 
beautiful design. They're both just beautiful designs. Now, I again, you know, if I was playing the AI, or if I was playing uh, Fish's Ship, I would have ran away. So, second round goes to Boomerang. One more round. Excellent dogfighting. I love it. It's amazing. Oh, oh. Oh, come on. You can do it. I don't know who I'm rooting for. I don't know because, you know, it's a 1-1 one -one battle. Okay, so, looks like uh, Boomerang took some... Oh, yep. Shoot him up. Well done. Boomerang. Congratulations. That is an expert design, and there is no reason why that would be excluded from any category in this competition. That is the design to beat. Uh, it's absolutely beautiful. So I want your guys' opinion. Now, this was a 250p fight. Should we keep the 250p category? I, I It's a lot of work for me. That's that's the thing. I, 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 wouldn't, I don't want to do more than three categories, but I want to open it up because I've had a lot of requests to open it up to be a little bit bigger. I guess we could keep both. I don't know. I don't know. My preference, I think, would be to have a 500p category category over a 250p, just because it, it, it adds a little bit more versatility to the designs. Um, I could also do a 250p category, but that just it's, it's just a lot of work to do all of this, right? It takes up all, it takes my whole Sunday. I started putting this together at around. Uh, one o'clock, I started getting all the information together so that we could uh, do the tournaments, and it is now 7 p.m., and I'm still on the first section of the tournament video. Anyway, so I'm going to get to work and put the cruisers into the tournament. Be right back. Okay, guys, I think I'm ready for round two in the cruiser battle, and we got just an incredible array of ships. And I, again, like last time, um, most of the ships that uh, didn't make it into this round are from the group of people that we're trying to just give me the name. Oh, whoops. Uh, what did I do there? Whoops. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there was about, it's about 50, 50, actually. If you give me the name of your fleet, uh, and even then sometimes I don't know if I'm getting the right ship. It looks like maybe sometimes we get an earlier version. I don't know. It's so hard to tell, but about 50, 50 of you, of you guys, you know, when you, when you just give me the name and stuff, but if you send me an email, hundred percent, hundred percent of every ship, that you give me end up in the competition somehow. So except with the exception of Sir Boomalot, I humbly apologize, but your ship is going to be in the Spinner League. And I think your Dreadnought is also going to be in the Spinner League. But everybody else, I think we're good to go. <laughs> Super excited. Uh, took like, uh, and, and the other thing is the looking for the fleets in this massive list and trying to match them up, uh, so it's, it's just, it takes a long time, way longer than it does for me to import your ship. So there's another reason. So, you know, I might be able to get these videos out earlier if we maybe just switch it over to doing strictly emails. But I, I want to keep as many people in the competition as possible. I don't want to exclude anybody, so I, we'll keep it as is for now. But I'm just telling you, if you have the ability to send me an email, let's do it that way. I like it better. Okay, I think we're good to go. So we have, uh, I don't know, how many com competitors? Uh, three, six... 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, uh, we'll say like 36 competitors, that's that's a fair amount, okay, let's do it, <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Space Invader versus Shark Fiend, uh, I wish I knew everybody's name, uh, attach, I wish I could attach a face or a name to everybody's ship, wow, nice start, looks like we've got some proton swords, some drones, Oh, actually, uh, Space Invader, I, I like the in engines. And another thing I was noticing is that a lot of ships are not using the full 3000p on this one. There was a lot of ships in the... Uh, good job, Shark Fiend, by the way. You, you just, you got those lasers, right? Um, the Proton Swords are really good, but... Uh, oh, wow. Why did the lasers shoot in all directions? That's crazy. The turreted lasers shot in all directions. Crazy. It looked like stuff was kind of loose in your ship there, kind of rattling around too. Anyway, interesting. Good fight. Good fight. Good start. Okay, so we got. Uh, this is a good example. Uh, for Gate Mark II here on the on the right side, he his ship is only like a thousand or something, a little over a thousand. So unfortunately, you're probably not going to do so well in this competition um, as these ships get bigger. Unless you can find something that's really good and a reason not to use use the extra two thousand points. Um, yeah, ships like KSW, they're going to eat you for lunch. I, I like your ambition. I really like your ambition, but you're probably going to have to... Here's another example. Um, the guy who, who made Pest really wanted to be part of the cruiser competition as well. Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> Pest, it, Pest was part of the 250, the probe competition. I, you've got the speed. I just don't think... 
See, you've already lost some engines there. Well, you're doing better than I expected, actually. Uh, you, you lost the first round pretty quickly, but the second round, I think you're pretty much done. And Rune Raider takes it with Beetle. Ha ha ha. That's why it's nice to know, put the names with the ships. That way I can actually, you know, say, hey, Rune Raider, do this. But I, I, I don't know everybody. Everybody's ship all that well. Oh, interesting. Lots of armor in the front. Oh, so Cal Calope Mass Driver has, you can't see it, but it's got this black armor in the front. I love that. I love that. And then the Proton Swords as well. So they're, both of them are Proton Sword ships. I think. I think the other one's Proton Swords too, too as well. Yeah, I think they're both Proton Swords. Really neat. So the other one's using shields while the other one's using just lots of armor. Oh no, you've lost your front end, Calope. Oh no, Sunset Alley is going to chew you up maybe. I don't know. I don't know, you're still moving around pretty good. But uh, yeah, those shields, I think, have... Oh, I've lost all your shields now, uh, Sunset Alley. You could actually... Oh, see? Uh, Kelope has some really good engines in the back there. I don't know, he's got the, the that maneuverability thing happening. Unfortunately, he's, it seems like he's not firing his guns as much as uh, Sunset is. Oh, but Kelope, he got it! Yeah, just like that! Armor versus shields. This is a good good experiment. Now it looks like Kelope has a little bit of shields, but uh, mostly he's relying on that those those front panels of of armor, and you can't see them. I, I really like that look, where it's it's this black armor and you can't see it. Uh, Sunset Alley, though, it looks like Sunset Alley has won the day. So excellent, good job, Sunset Alley. Okay, so Blue Fish versus CKB Thor. So CKB. Thor, I'm not sure which faction. Oh, that might be faction one. And then Blue Fish is amazing. So just a big, so he's using a big shield system as well as a number of smaller shield systems. He gets in slow and then launches those lasers and just chews through. Look at that. Uh, except it didn't win that time. You know, you're just relying on those shields. And, uh, but it's interesting that your ship is like, he's, the AI's not trying to fly like really evade shots but bluefish won it again and i think that's veen bergen i think that's rick from the channel so good job rick all right so we have fire dancer versus snipey snipey is a new contender i i don't remember who they are uh fire Dan oh neat one big asteroid engine in the front there or maybe it's the back i don't know oh you just lost your engine oh no so it looks like the advantage there was you're trying to keep range but but you've got lasers? What, what are those? Those are, uh, those are lasers of some kind, are they? I think. And, uh, Snipey, you're just, you're relying on lots and lots and lots of railguns and some good armor, and all of your engines are on the inside of your ship. Interesting fight. Wow. But it looks like Fire Dancer actually... Whoa! Those are schmutz launchers! <gasps> oh! Those are, like, longbows and schmutz launchers. No, what are they? Wow, I'm I'm actually stunned. Those uh, those big guns. They look like the Schmutz launchers, but they're not. They're they're like they're some kind of rail or something. Oh wow, just chew them apart. Look at how much damage that does. Holy crow, just wow. Uh, yeah, well done. Yeah, you took out those. The the shields are down, and there, Fire Dancer takes it. Well done, Fire Dancer. Uh, I don't remember what kind of gun that is, but. Uh, yeah, I think that's Faction 1. I'm not sure, but uh, really, really well done. Okay, so now we have Pure Battler versus HMS Potato Sword. HMS is coming in with some Proton Swords, whereas Pure Battler is hitting him with the big old, big old missiles from... I think that's uh, the uh, the race that uh, I played, the Aldorvan. I, I don't remember which faction that is. Faction 4? No, not Faction 4. Uh, faction... I don't know, but... Uh, HMS Potato Sword takes round two, but those those missiles, with, when they hit, do a lot of damage, and they ignore the shields. That in combination with lots and lots and lots of those uh, plasma guns could be trouble for Potato Sword. Yep, Pure Battler wins it. Well done. Interesting. I don't think we've seen too much of this faction in the competition yet, so really pleased to see them here. Excellent. Bombardier Beetle versus Fractal MK2 1v3. Interesting name. I love the design of the ship. Oh, again, using... I'm not sure if that's a Faction 1 gun. I'm not sure what faction that is. I'd love to know. Please, guys, let me know. Uh, really awesome. Oh, I just love the way the engines look. Uh, Bombardier Beetle, he is trying to get in close, but he just he just can't seem to do it. And those big guns just chew him apart. Well done. I think that's Faction 1. Pretty sure that's Faction 1 that's running uh, Fractal MK2. And I, I know I've used those guns before. I think I've used those guns before, but... Uh, 
I didn't think they were that good. Wow, that, that I take it all back. Bombardier Beetle, he is struggling to try and get close enough, but he just can't get close enough. Those guns are just too good. And I wonder, I bet you Fractal, I bet you that design with that kind of gun would do pretty good against even Faction 4. Well done. Well done. Uh, Fractal. Uh, sorry, Bombardier. You're out of the competition. It was a good fight, though. Uh, Model T, Model 8CT Battle Cruiser. Uh, we've seen this competitor before. Uh, I don't remember. I don't remember who it is. I apologize. Um, lots of armor in the front and lots and lots of guns underneath. Some armor along with some engines versus in Corman. And I think he was trying to say incoming, but maybe he was trying to say in Corman. I don't know. But uh, in Corman is a undervalued or a underweight ship. I think he's at about thousand. So he came in a little light, and uh, Model 8CT Battle Cruiser is uh, pretty well armed and has lots, lots and lots of armor. And it would be pretty tough, I think, for Incorman to take this, but who knows? Uh, those, I just don't think he's got enough of those small missiles to be able to really scratch the paint. Yeah. Good effort, though. Valiant effort. And well done, Model 8C. All right, and then we have T5 Striker versus Battle Cruiser. Oh, this looks like uh, maybe a... Oh, missiles and plasmas. And, oh, and lasers. Oh, love it. I love it when the lasers come out. I don't know. For some reason, I really like the lasers. And they can, you know, they can drastically change the outcome of the battle in an instant. What kind of laser is that? It looks different. Wow. Amazing. See, the lasers just dig right in. They go for what they want. And then that's it. And that, you know, it speaks to the, the reason why you would want to put your... Your command center, you want to put it as deep into your ship as possible because all it takes is a stray laser to sort of find a weak point and get in there and take it out, right? So you want to get in there, you want to make sure that your your command center is nicely buried under some heavy armor or something. Wow, just chewed him up. Battlecruiser, nice little ship. You've, you know, you've got some good forward, forward thrust and... Uh, yeah, T5 Striker. You know, those shields in any, I would say, against other opponents, you would do very, very well. Um, it just, Battlecruiser just just happened to know your weak points there. That's all. And here comes Swordfish. Another one of the, uh, that design. Looks like, you know, lots of armor on the outside, but he's got his engines. Some of his engines are on the outside. Some of them are on the inside. And then it looks like he's got some missiles too as well. Nice, nice combination. And then we've got Tournament Robot 2. And I'm not seeing any guns on Tournament Robot 2. Maybe I'm not seeing any guns. Maybe it's all lasers in there? I can't tell. Maybe when it gets in close here, we're going to see something. Oh, it looks like there was some lasers or something on there, but uh, he never had a chance to fire them off. Okay, let's hope Tournament Robot 2 can get in and actually get a shot off. But uh, it looks like Swordfish has just got a really well-balanced vehicle with lots of different weapon types. I think Tournament Robot 2 would have to just get in really fast, and it just doesn't look like it's going to happen. I don't know that he's got any... I don't see any weapons on his ship, and I thought I did for a second there. Maybe maybe there was some lasers or something, but uh, unfortunately not enough to take on Swordfish. Okay, so now we're going on to Swiper versus Laser Sweeper. One of the things I love about doing these competitions is just seeing what you guys create. It's amazing. Whoa, Laser Sweeper. It's like a, it almost looks like a Borg ship. It's all engines. Look at that. It's amazing. It is a Borg ship. It's actually the race, the Borg ship. I, the Borg race, or they're not not—they're not called the Borg, but they're the ones, uh, they're the city builders. That's it. Look at all the laser. Oh, wow. The laser drones win the day. I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention to your competitor. Sorry, Sniper. It looks like you lost that one. I, I apologize, but, uh, you know, enter in next time. And here we got Almog's Crusher versus... Wow. Uh, wow. Okay, so Faction 1. Faction 1 is really, you know, they're they're a well-balanced species, but it looks like Kavark is using Faction 4, and he just can't get those shots off fast enough to take off Almog's Crusher. Yeah, so Faction 4, first uh, first serious loss I've seen for fac Faction 4 that quickly. Yeah, it looks like people are building ships to fight off Faction 4, and I might have been right in my decision not to ban those ships, because I think, I think... It just stepped up everybody's game because, wow, some really nice designs coming in here. So Shark Fiend comes in with those lasers and digs in very quickly against KSW. KSW has a lot of armor, though. I Oh, oh right. So Shark Fiend is also using the laser drones from, I think it's Faction 6. And uh, they, they just dig. They're brutal. I, I'd say some of the best drones in the game. Ah, Shark Fiend won the day. And KSW, good design. 
Just those laser drones. They, lasers are dangerous. Lasers are dangerous in this game. They can quickly change the outcome. Whoa! Beetle Cruiser is going to take a beating here from Sunset Alley, but Rune Raider does surprise us sometimes. Those rails, he always puts big rails on his vehicles, but not that time. Didn't didn't win the day that time. It looks like uh, Beetle Cruiser is going to come in, maybe try and do the same thing, get as much damage off as he can, but one-on-one -on -one fight, can he take it? He can! Well done! Rune Raider, good job. All right, he's going to come in, those big rails again, going hard, going hard, oh, 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 but the problem is, he's, he, if he can't get that initial win, a lot of times, no, who's, oh no! Beetle won it, wow! Wow, a lot of damage. But you know, in his fights, every one of his fights, is always he always takes a lot of damage, but just seems to skin by. I don't know how. Uh, oh, atypical. Atypical burst laser. Neat. Bluefish won it, but barely. So he's using burst lasers. So they charge up, and then they do a lot of damage at once. Oh, oh, but those... Uh, oh, atypical won it. No way. Amazing. Okay, good fight. Good fight, those lasers get in. They do a lot of damage very quickly. Bang, done. Just like that, but you know, it's kind of luck. It's almost luck with Atypical. Good good fight. Sorry, Bluefish, you're out of it. I'm getting to some serious contenders here now, though. Uh, Cheats Fighter, and I happen to know that Cheats Fighter is, uh, is, is below value. I think he's at around the one to 2,000 range, so he's, yeah, I can't see him doing that well in this competition. It just speaks to the fact that if you want to enter in on a 3,000 or, or a 4,000 uh, P ship competition, unless you've really got got what it takes, you know, I, I don't know, you're going to be hard-pressed to beat somebody with all the uh, extra points at their disposal. You know, some of those big weapons on, on a vehicle just makes all the difference, right? It's a good sh it's a good ship, and I like, the, I like the concept of having all of those engines uh, on the inside of your ship. It's just not quite enough. All right, so we're on to Totes Naborg. Totally asymmetrical design. Like like me, I'm sure we all love it and hate it. I, I actually love that kind of concept. It's hard to build a good ship that's asymmetrical. Um, really interesting. You're Wow, you are actually beating him up. Wow, he comes in with an asymmetrical design and wow, surprises everybody. Well done. Pure Battler is, is of course, using the same race, uh, it's faction, I don't remember, it's the one where, the, like, the Elder Van, uh, really awesome guns on that ship, but, uh, yeah, I don't know, I don't know, was it a fluke that, that, uh, Totes Naborg won that first round? I guess we're about to see, with the asymmetrical design, can he do it again? I don't know, he's gotta get out of that line of fire, he's not gonna win it like that, he's gotta actually get in there and chew off those main guns, cause with those main guns continuing to fire, He's just, he's just going to get eaten alive. And it, I don't know. I don't know. He doesn't have any good long-range weapons. I mean, those... Uh, I don't know what those are. Uh, what? Surprises us all. I eat my words. Okay, so this should be a really good fight. Model 8C versus the Fractal. So we've got those big, big, big centerline guns versus a lot of armor. And as long... And, you know, Fractal's got lots of engines and well placed too like he's able to keep that distance so i don't know and with the splash with the splash damage he's able to take out some of those guns or engines on the inside of the ship see see that he's actually taking out the guns on the inside of the ship with the splash damage from those main guns so well done oh it reminds me of uh, uh starfleet battles and some of the big guns you could ha have center of klingon ships really really neat uh like a mauler reminds me of the mauler from from starfleet battles i love that they take a while to charge up, but they do a ton of damage, and you have to be facing your target. So, yeah, wow. It looks like uh, Fractal may win this just via points. He keeps finding it tr he's finding it tough to get through all that armor, but yeah, I don't think it's going to matter. I think, uh, I think he's able to keep the distance from Model 8C just with all those engines on that ship. So, speed. Speed. And good ship design uh, is winning the day here. Yeah, because he's just able... Yeah, we'll speed this up just a bit, two times. Yeah, I don't think that Model 8C can get close enough to actually do any more damage. Fractal, well done. 20,000 points. Well done. All right, let's try this again. You know, if, if Model 8C can get in close right away, but no, he just can't. Look, look at how quickly Fractal starts moving. Look at that. Oh, we've got it on fast speed here. 
Oh, but it wouldn't take much. It wouldn't take much for Fractal to go, Fractal to go down. But he does have some nice front armor. But if 8C got on the side of him, he, he would rip him to shreds. He would he would break him in two almost instantly. But uh, just the amount of engines that's on Fractal, I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be kind of like the last time where he just... Oh, 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 gets it closed. I slowed it down there. Uh, he, he got a couple shots off, but he'd have to actually break off that front piece, I think. Like split off uh, a lot of those uh, engines in order to make that work. I just don't know that's gonna if that's going to happen. Nope. I think Fractal's got it. Oh, 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 he's getting close enough. Oh, no. <laughs> I would love to see Model 8C win second round here just to make it a, a fun fight, but I don't think that's going to happen. Maybe if he gets in close enough. No, no, no. All, really all, if Fractal just left right now, he would win. But, uh, and he probably could. He's got enough engine power, I think, to pull it off. But uh, no, that's not going to happen. Okay, speed it up just a touch. I think that's it. Yes, Model 8C, great fight. Unfortunately, Fractal won it. Just lots of engines. Sometimes engines are what decides the battle. Okay, Battlecruiser versus Swordfish. So Swordfish is really, it looks like a fast design. So I think we've seen the maker of Swordfish in the first round. Uh, I forget the name of the ship that he made, but, and Battlecruiser we've seen already uh, rip apart some people. He gets in close with those lasers and just finds those weak points, right? But I don't know. Swordfish has lots of armor, I don't know, and, and it looks like Battlecruiser's already lost. Yeah, Battlecruiser lost those shields, and yeah, that was it. That was it. Those those rails, because he's got big rails on there. Like, oh yeah, big rails, once they get in close, Faction 1, those big rails are dangerous. Gotta keep a range, right? So Laser Sweeper versus Ol Olamogs, Crusher, so another one of Faction 1's, and Laser Sweeper is, oh right, right, Faction 6, the City Builders, those those laser drones are just crazy. So you've got to have some really good point defense in order to take out those drones. I, it's it's remarkable. I, I actually really love watching the laser drones work. It's a wonder that there isn't more of this faction in the competition, because I think they are going to be a really strong contender, and even against against faction four as well. And not that we've seen a lot of faction four. I don't think we've seen any faction four here yet. Have we? Maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think we've seen any faction four in the cruiser competition yet. Uh, I don't think that Olmog's going to go down with just the drones alone, but he's certainly be, ke being kept occupied. Laser Sweeper's just sitting there launching them now. That's it. That's all he has to do. And and he's just ra raking in the points, and it's almost over. We're going to slow it down as I get closer here, because maybe he'll get in with those lasers, but I don't know. Getting through that armor is going to be tough. Even with those lasers, getting in through that armor, unless he can kind of... Oh, shoot off those bigger guns! Uh, I don't think he can do it though. Oh, took out. Almost has it. So close. He may actually get it. Oh, and he gets it. Wow. Well done. Yeah. Lasers. Lasers. Freaking lasers on their freaking foreheads. Okay. There we go. And oh, but if Oma gets in there and does enough damage right at the beginning and take out some of those engines, then Laser Sleeper, Sweeper can't keep that range. And he may actually be in trouble because those rails destroy Laser Sweeper. Well done. La well done, Olamog. Okay, Laser Sweeper is coming in, and of course, he's got, you know, that first pass, he's got to take a swipe and then get away. Uh, otherwise, you're in trouble. You know, f facing Faction 1, rails will chew you up. You've got to keep that range. And it looks like he's he's the same same tactic as the first round, is just keep him at range and let the drones do all the talking for you. You don't need to get in close. You don't need to do any more damage. You just need to stay, keep at range. And Olamog, unfortunately, uh, you might be in the same position as first time. But uh, you're, you're going to get in close here and maybe get a couple shots off. I don't know. I don't know. It looks like the rails are facing the wrong direction. They're trying to fight the drones. That's why the rails... So interesting that the AI... You know, it'll be really cool when you can actually adjust some of these things. Um, but, you know, if the AI is fighting with, at the drones when, you know, really... It doesn't matter how many drones you kill. Uh, you need to kill the bad guy. You need to kill the big guy, right? Because you need to kill the source sometimes. So, you know, it'd be cool if you could uh, add some script. Okay, so Beetle Cruiser, which does a lot of burst damage really quickly, getting in close, versus uh, Shark Fiend, which also has the, which is also Faction 6, and uh, it has lots of lasers, and, oh, yeah, oh, wow. Interesting lasers. I, I haven't actually played that race yet. So, so they're a dump fire laser, so they, oh, wow, and Beetle, yeah. Those big rail guns, man. I tell you. And he's got the maneuverability, too. That's the other thing. He's got the speed, so he can get in there and do all that damage so quickly 
that the enemy doesn't have time to respond almost. And, uh, you know, Shark Feed, I think that's probably your, your nemesis is, is a fast ship. And it looks like, looks like Beetle Cruiser is just fast enough to be able to kind of dodge your, your lasers, which require you to be dead set on target. So, yeah, Beetle Cruiser wins it. Well done. Okay, so Fire Dancer versus Atypical Burst Laser. I really like the AT I like the Burst Laser design. I, I'm hoping to see more designs using the Burst Lasers because I think they're, they have merit. I don't think they track. No, they are a dumb fire weapon. At least in that ship, they are. I have seen. Okay, what's going on? Okay, nobody. All oh, right, because they're both using short range weapons. Oh, oh, maybe not. Oh, right. That's why he's got the big asteroid gun on the back. That makes sense. So he just stays at range. Or asteroid. Sorry, asteroid uh, engine. He just stays at range and fires backwards. We've seen the tactic before, and it's an effective tactic. Tactic, Well done. Although I question the use of the asteroid um, engine. I don't know that they're that efficient, but maybe they are. I don't know. I, I haven't looked at them too closely. Um, so here we go with Fractal and his beautiful, sleek, highly maneuverable design versus Totez, the asymmetrical design. And, of course, Fractal wins it. Yep. Yep. Uh, Totaz would have to get in and kind of circle around him, but I don't know that the AI would do that for him. Uh, the AI is not smart enough, but uh, it's. I love the asymmetrical design. I want to see more asymmetrical design. Like everybody, like in the current season that I was playing, it was pissing me off and it was pissing everybody else off. It was pissing me off trying to make asymmetrical designs because it's frustrating and it's not satisfying at all. Um, but... Uh, I, I bow to you because it is it is uh, it's worthy and I think there needs to be more of that kind of stuff it just adds to the flavor right I love it anyway uh, I think fractals going to take it from you unfortunately I do like the design though that was cool it was a cool design it was I don't know anyway fractal well, well done okay we're on to laser sweeper versus swordfish laser sweeper is the uh, city builder design with the laser drones and of course we have swordfish in the faction one with lots of big rail guns uh, but you see, that's it. That's what's that's what's happening. The AI tries to fire at the drones. It tries to fire at immediate threats, and uh, yeah, that doesn't work. Not 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 right now. Uh, you know, maybe they'll fix that later. Oh yeah, he's he's into your un delicate underbelly. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. Unfortunately, uh, now <laughs> great design. You know what? And j this just like Faction Four, we can't we can't we can't say that a certain weapon or a certain faction are automatically not allowed to fight in these competitions because there's there's always a nemesis right there's always uh something that can beat it and i just think these these laser drones are highly effective and you know i'd love to see a ship like that against a good faction four ship i i think uh, i think they would uh, compete against each other unfortunately those laser drones they just gradually kind of weld through in, into the hull right and uh, they find your your juicy bits on the inside and then they start eating now, the one laser drone by itself doesn't do a lot of damage, but in numbers like that, they just, yeah. Toast. Wow, he did take, take some damage there. Well done. We are on the final four. Beetle Cruiser versus Fire Dancer. So we've got the rear firing guns versus the Beetle Cruiser which, with his uh, Alpha Strike. Uh, but Fire Dancer, he's got to get some range on him. He's gotta, if he gets the range, but that, he's going to lose that main engine. Losing that main engine, he might be in trouble. But Beetle Cruiser has taken a pummeling. I don't know if he can recover. No, Fire Dancer wins it. Well done. Great fight. <laughs> Absolutely wonderful. Okay, you've got to get some range on there, Fire Dancer, and Beetle Cruiser, you've got to close it. If he takes out, he takes out, the, oh, wow, beautiful shot from Fire Dancer. Well done. Okay, Fractal versus Laser Sweep. This is going to be an awesome fight. How does Fractal deal with all those laser drones? I don't know. I don't know. Can he? I don't know. But he's got missiles, which will try to take out drones, too, as well. I, I, see, this is the first time we've seen Fractal kind of kind of at a loss it doesn't know what to do how does it deal with all these drones and lasers just like yeah okay i'm just gonna keep launching them until he's dead and i think this might be this might be the end of fractal wow wow well done excellent laser sweeper okay round two if fractal can get a couple good shots off though laser sweeper might be in trouble uh except it looks like it looks like the AI it, even even his main guns. He was trying to fire his main guns at the drones, and that doesn't work. It works for Faction Four, but not for for uh, Faction One. No, it's too bad. That's too bad. Oh, it was, it was, well. Either way, it's a good design, Laser Sweeper. 
it's a really good design. You just lots of drones and uh, lots of engines. That's that's all you are is lots of drones and lots of engines. I love it. Fire Dancer versus Laser Sweeper. I think my would put my money on Laser Sweeper, but I don't know. Maybe Fire Dancer can just keep that range. You got to keep that range and start firing fire. Oh, he did fire fast enough. I don't know if he can pull it off. Oh, no. Laser Sweeper ate him for lunch. And here we go. Fire Dancer, he's got to get a shot off. Start shooting. Oh, it's those drones. They just mess everybody up. As soon as the drones come out, these laser drones come out, um, the enemy doesn't know how to deal with them. Ah, it's an AI issue, but at the same time, it's also good ship design. Well done, Laser Sweeper. You have won. <sighs> You've won the cruiser round. Excellent. I will be back shortly with the Dreadnought Tournament. I think we're probably going to do that in a second video. So anyway, guys, I hope you've enjoyed the first video of the third tournament. It's such a blast to put these together for you guys. And uh, stay tuned for the next episode, and I will detail again on how to send me your ship via email. Okay, I'll be back shortly.